Hi guys, and welcome to this episode of the Never Normal Podcast. For those of you listening, thank you so much uh, for doing so, and you guys are here. You guys are still here. You're coming back for more episodes. Uh, And that's why I have invited a very special guest. As you notice, Casey's not here this week. Uh, He's he's here, not here. Um, But he's at our house because we film in our house. Anyways, this is... Megan! Hi! This is my friend from Chattanooga. We've known each other since, like, what, 2017, 2018? 18, I think, for sure. Yes. Um, And she has got quite a bit that we're going to film today. She's up here for the day. So we're going to film multiple episodes today. Um, Super excited for this opportunity. Very thankful to have a willing participant as far as guests. I'm glad you're letting me come, (laughs) honestly. I was like, as soon as I saw you were posting, you're like, can I have any guests about any paranormal, you know, people? Or I'm like, hell yeah, I would love to be a paranormal people. So, (laughs) a paranormal people. I am a paranormal people. I should have shirts. There you go. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, so for this first episode, we're just going to kind of introduce you um to watchers and listeners and kind of talk about my favorite thing is hearing people's personal paranormal experiences yes and i've kept Um, a lot of those to myself so far so (laughs) so we're kind of deep diving um it's a little (laughs) nerve-wracking i know are you scared we kind of talked about it well it's i'm scared (laughs) for me it's more exciting yeah like that anxious exciting because You know, growing up, I had a lot of paranormal experiences, which I will one day share with you all. (laughs) I just have to sort through them. And then, so I understand the sort of fear that people have in sharing their paranormal experiences, especially on the internet. Yeah. uh, (laughs) There's a vulnerability in that. It's definitely (laughs) something that I have been anxious about for the last, like, three days. Because So we have rescheduled this. This is third time's the charm kind of vibes. Oh my Um, gosh, yes. I got sick the first time. (laughs) She got sick the second time. So I was like, okay, it's either going to happen this time or it's not going to happen at all. So I got to get my booty down there. Um, And and that's something I talked to my husband about before I left um, the house today because I was like, I'm very excited, but I'm super nervous. He's like, why are you nervous? I'm like, well, my family might watch. He's like, your family's not going to watch. I'm like, she's going to tag me on Facebook and everything. So, you know. Um, but I was like, the thing, I, it's not that my family doesn't know some things. And they know probably, like, I'd say about 60% of what I'll talk about today. But, you know, I, I don't know why it's my family that makes me nervous. Because I don't care about strangers. <laughs> like, if strangers know my, like whatever is going on any trauma i don't even care about that it's my family that i get freaked out about which i probably shouldn't but i'm like i don't want to be judged (laughs) well i mean you know the whole social anxiety thing i have really bad social anxiety that's a lot of reason why mine's circumstantial like i don't do cons anymore because yeah social anxiety is like so bad a lot of people too and if you have a lot of people coming up to you all the time yes and like i did it for like 10 years and i was like look after covid (laughs) after covid and like not being able to touch people for two years yeah, like, I feel like everyone's like that right now. Yeah, it's like a weird... We're in like a really weird space. We time warped. We did. And then coming out of that is a lot of anxiety. But mm-hmm. no, I am super happy that you're here. And I'm super grateful. Um, and I'm super excited for the things that we're going to talk about today. Um, we met... I'm going to kind of go through the timeline. We met yeah. in 2018. Um, I had moved back to Tennessee. And... We worked on a film project mm-hmm. together. Shout Dude. out to the In Motion Boys. <laughs> um, we absolutely adore you guys. Yes. Um, and then from there, we just kind of like had friendship. Yeah. Like it was internet friendship. 100%. Like we, did, we didn't but hang out and stuff just because. We no, also had busy lives. We really I think did. the both of us did. Yeah. Like you had your own stuff going on. I had my own stuff going on. I was, when we met, I was getting out of a very turbulent relationship in the past. Like, I think I think I was with my now husband when we met, but like yeah, early guys, on. Yeah, you guys had just got together. Like, yeah, within like months. I, I think do, I do remember that you were you were going to visit. Were you going to visit him? <laughs> I yeah. think so. I yeah. think I was going to go visit him um, in North Carolina, where he lived at the time, because he was uh, military and everything. Um, but like when I had met my now husband, that I met him three months after getting out of a three year long like super tumultuous dramatic relationship and uh so like i was in a weird 
transitional state, I think, when we first met. So yeah. I'm very excited that we're meeting where I'm, like, a lot more grounded <laughs> than the last time. But but yeah. we did. It was kind of, like, instant friendship. Like, we were on set. We were having a good time. Like, we just felt really comfortable with each yeah. other. And yeah. that was really nice. It was one of those things where, like, I think there are certain people in the world that, like, I don't know if you, you know, soul family or whatever, but, like, the, that you just, like, are supposed to meet. You know what I mean? I do. I do believe that there are certain people who just by pass well. by. In yeah. your life, but there are certain people who are meant to be a part of your life. Yeah, sense. and it's so funny because during that time, I didn't really talk about like paranormal stuff. Yeah, and I had no idea. I hadn't either, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> so, um, because I had always, you know, I had done stuff before and yeah. then took a really long hiatus in it and then got back into it. Um, but I think it's really interesting how now <laughs> we've kind of intertwined. And we are still kind of relatively in the same area to where we can do stuff yeah. like this. Well, I just moved in back to Tennessee in February, too. Yeah. So it's been really recent that I've even been back in this area at all. Yeah. And then it just kind of like... Because we were initially trying to do this, what, probably like before you even put out your first episode, yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been a few months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because Well, I have been trying to do the... I've been wrestling with myself, Mm -hmm. I should say, to do the podcast for, since I had met Casey, so like two, three years, and, you know, it's one of those things, it's like a can of worms sometimes when you're putting yourself out there with something like this. It's vulnerability for sure, you say. Yeah, and and I'm a very guarded person in a sense of (laughs) I don't like vulnerability. It's hard. (laughs) I'll admit that. It is very hard. I don't like vulnerability. Um, but that's also why I wanted to do this to Mm -hmm. open the door for these topics and open the door so other people feel welcome in sharing their things and open the door for people to learn who are interested Mm -hmm. in that thing. It's like a, it's like a whole thing. I don't know how well it's going, (laughs) but you know, I mean, I, I will say I do have people who I do get messages sometimes and they're like you know I really like what you're doing it's just very chill sit down kind of thing and that's yeah and that's what I want so we're just gonna keep doing it but so we met in 2018 and yeah. then we were basically internet friends from there mm-hmm. I and I hadn't really known that you were into the paranormal stuff either like you said you probably didn't know anything about because I didn't talk about it online either. either so um the only thing I knew you for was like the cosplaying and the con stuff and I was yeah. like okay so she's like out there she's putting herself out there she's like <laughs> you know she's a little yeah. haughty out here doing her thing oh, <laughs> and honestly I was like it was surprising to me in a way, weird way, because like I go through my friends list on Facebook and I like clean out every so oh, often. Gosh, yeah, and I never you clicked have on to. you. I no, I didn't either. You. I was like, no, I want to see what she's doing. <laughs> I want to see what she's yeah. up to. Like, I yeah. might as well just keep her around, you know. Yeah. And then they posted that like offering earlier this year, and I was like, because I I attempted a paranormal podcast years ago, and I was like, I would love to do one where I'm not like stressed the whole time. <laughs> Because, like, being in charge of the podcast, the editing, like, making sure all the clips are stay together and everything, that's so stressful sometimes. It definitely, it definitely can be. And that was one we talked yeah. earlier. That's one of the goals with this is I... And it's the same thing with the cosplay thing. Yeah. And that's kind of why I left. If I'm not having fun anymore, yeah. I'm not going to do it. Exactly. It's not worth it. No. Then they know you're not having fun anymore either. And then they're yeah. not having a good time either. So. They know it's a party. Yeah. At this point, all the time. But, yeah. So, and then we just kind of stayed friends from mm-hmm. there. And then... You know, I know that I had posted about doing, you know, I had the paranormal blog for a little while. And Which I, was, I didn't even know about that. You kept referencing it on mm-hmm. um, on the podcast and everything as I was listening through, like, the newer episodes. And I was like, okay, so where the hell was this blog? Because <laughs> I am so well, sad yeah, I missed it. Was yeah, it Tumblr it was, or something? It was, I, it's still up. It's okay. just inactive. Um, yeah, that's fair. But I, which there is a way, it's on WordPress, and there is, I thought about bringing it back for the sole purpose mm-hmm. of, you can put your podcast audio on there, oh. and it formats it into a blog post. Well, that's really freaking cool. That is really freaking cool. Yeah. But no, um, I, I did have that, and I kept it for a time, and then I was like, I want to do something more personable. Because mm-hmm. yeah, I'm sitting there researching and writing this stuff, because that's what I wanted to do in college before I majored in music. I wanted to be a writer. I've loved writing and storytelling and stuff from a very young age. I'm the same way. I Um, I was a very weird child. (laughs) Very weird. My teachers would always say, she's so special to my mom. (laughs) My teachers would always be like, you know, like she's always got, she's always got a book in her hands. Like, you know, she's just always consuming literature. She's just, she's smart. And I'm like over here reading like 
30 bucks. <laughs> I'm like, you don't even, you don't even. It's usually like dirty paranormal romance. Like, that was like my go to in high school. Oh, I was like, same. oh, yeah. <laughs> Which oh one? Oh gosh, there's one. It's not Twilight, but that it's, counts. <laughs> it wasn't Twilight. It was um, the girl, and she was like falling in love with a ghost boy out of this okay. museum. No, that's not the one. Out in the woods. Or oh, I'm thinking of a whole different one where a girl falls in love with a ghost boy. Um, his name was Caspian, and he had like. Yeah, Do I we know the same one. book? It's The Haunted, The Hollow, and yes. the, that series was yes. my favorite series. Yes. I even got into perfume making for a short period of time because, wow. you know, I got Dedicated. obsessed. I got obsessed. Yeah. I even have a sign something from the author because I wrote, wrote her a letter because I was so interested. It was so cute. It was really cute. Definitely, um, definitely but that was, like, my genre. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I. It was so funny when I was, and this is how far back the paranormal goes for me, when I was in the sixth grade, mm-hmm. we wrote our own books it was like a school contest i still have it somewhere if i'll I'll try to find it at some point it's so bad first of all you had to do your own art and everything but it's about this girl that's okay and she moved to this area with her horse yeah okay because i was a horse girl still am um and she meets this ghost and she has to help this ghost move on so even from the sixth grade Okay, so you know what I was doing in sixth grade? I was very, like, that's how long the paranormal has, like, (laughs) been in my personal... So in sixth grade, I didn't write a book about this, but I did write a screenplay, and we did start filming it. I was 12. Um, Wow. (laughs) But, uh, because I've always been interested in the film aspect. Like, I always thought that that was, like, such a cool artistic thing to do with it. Yeah. So do you know the song, Lips of an Angel? (laughs) It's hard to be faithful (laughs) with the lips of an angel. So I took that song, because at the time, I was around people that... Also, by the way, this was (laughs) when I was, like, diving into my first, like religious experiences in one way, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I probably shouldn't have been doing what I was doing here, but, um, anyway, so, so I'd written this screenplay in regards to the song, because the song inspired me. I was like, well, what if, what if the girl that, like, he was cheating on, um, died, (laughs) and then she came back to, like, essentially kill him, because he cheated on her. And so, like, I had even made this character, I'd, like, I would paint my face white, and I did, like, the big black, like, eyes, and, like, two pigtails that were all, like, I was like 12 (laughs) and I was like no I want to make sure so it was like so like the screenplay had him like meeting the girl that he was cheating on her with after his like wife or girlfriend had died and like they were doing their own thing and then the the ghost comes and like kills the new girlfriend and like I was getting very dark with it early on I didn't care (laughs) but yeah I've been obsessed with that kind of stuff and I've had so my experiences in my opinion, um, looking back as an adult and like reassessing some things, because kids mm-hmm. say some weird stuff, you know, like kids yeah. will say and do some weird stuff. But the first time I remember anything being like a little bit weird, but not thinking it was weird at the time, um, my parents took me, it was like just, I don't even know if my brother was there or not, because he was so young, but my parents took me to this like, um, It was like a museum out in the woods, but had like log cabins and like they took you on like a little tour of all the cabins. Kind of like Cade's Cove. Kind of, I think. It reminds me a little bit more of like, um, you know, in Norris, the Appalachian Museum. Yeah. So like that, but like out in the woods. Okay. And then you could take tours and like the tour. And I may have been like four or five. I have Mm -hmm. memories going all the way back to like two years old. I'm like a little strange in that way. But like, so they took us, I was probably three or four and they took us on this tour and everything. And my parents got lost because we didn't have GPS, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) back when I was three or four years old, we had a map and they got, (laughs) they (laughs) were the days. Yeah. My, my dad was trying to navigate (laughs) us. He was getting frustrated. My mom was trying to navigate us with a map on the passenger seat and she was getting frustrated and I'm in the back seat, like looking in the back in the seat next to me, and I kept seeing, like, and not physically seeing, but in my head seeing. But I thought, like, as a kid, you don't think about it; mm-hmm. you just do it. And I saw this other little girl who was wearing—I can still remember, remember. She had like dark hair. I don't know if it was like brown or something. And then she had like a little like black dress, like a plain black cotton dress with buttons, and then like little Mary Janes, like black Mary Janes and like Mm. white tights that she was wearing. Kind of reminded me of like an American Girl doll or something, you know what I'm saying? Like in that same like frilly way, I guess. And I was describing what this girl looked like to my mom. I was like, mom, there's this girl sitting next to me. And she was like, that's nice, sweetie. (laughs) She's like over here. She's looking at the map. She's like, look, we're lost. We're like going in circles now. And I'm like, but mom, I'm like, this is what she looks like. And she's wearing Mary Jane's. I really like Mary Jane's. I want some Mary Jane's. And she was like, you know, like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm going to go back to doing this. They never took me seriously about that kind of stuff. (laughs) So she's like, she's just, she has an active imagination. Maybe I did. I don't know. But, um, 
I count that situation a little bit just because like looking back as an adult, I know for a fact that there was something I was like acknowledging. It wasn't me just like trying to entertain myself because right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then I actually have, so I have a mirror. It's, it's a mirror attached to a um, like makeup table situation. It's been yeah. in our family for like a couple generations, but and I think we bought it new. I don't think we bought it from anything. So I don't really know what's going on with it. But um, it was like my my mom's uh, my mom's grandfather on my grandmother's side mm. owned it and then like passed it down to me when I was like five or six. Um, and they had like restored it and like stained it and everything made it nice for me. And I've had it since my whole life. I have it now still. Um, but when they first put it into my room, like, they, everyone, like, put it in there, installed it, whatever, and then, like, they left for the day, and I was kind of left in my room, I was, like, eating some yogurt or something, you know, yeah. I'm a kid, and I was just, like, eating my yogurt, and I was coming up to it, and I was, like, looking at it, checking it out, and I go to, like, move it, so it's more, like, I'm sitting at the, like, table, and I'm, like, going to move the mirror so I can, like, see myself better, because it's, like, you're able to, like, adjust it and everything, yeah. and um, as I'm adjusting it, and I'm, like, touching it, um, I, <laughs> I had a weird image of, like, three different, like, creatures passed through my brain scared the hell out of me mm. i didn't really understand how to process that so i ran to my mom i was like mom, mom there's monsters in the mirror there's monsters in the mirror and she was like <laughs> no they're not so she picked me up and she like brought me back in there and she made me touch it again and i was yeah. like i don't want to touch it again she's like it's fine it's fine megan there's nothing in the mirror and i'm like in her head she was like oh my god this kid is so dramatic she no <laughs> let me tell you my mother still thinks i'm dramatic but like she does believe me now yeah. at the time she was just like you know you're just like you know you're a kid like but i was in tears like it, you know mm. it's not that it wasn't easy to get me into tears but like that's such a weird thing for me to have touched the mirror had that image and then go crying to my mom right. about it that's a little strange even for me <laughs> yeah but like that's as early on as i can remember of like strange things being the case yeah. so. and, that's, and like as a kid too i never really talked about it um <laughs> to my family or anything yeah. but i experienced some weird stuff growing up from an early age as well honestly yeah. um like i filmed pottery and stuff mm -hmm. on our land and brought it back to the house kind artifacts. of artifacts you're always finding stuff i love uh, that well i used to want to be an egyptologist oh I love that. Taught myself how to read some hieroglyphics. That's so cute. At some point when I was a kid. So yeah. I can still read a little bit. But but yeah, so no, I definitely get it. And I think that uh, in a case that I have next week, mm -hmm. a residential paranormal case, actually, um, I think I'm not going to do a location video on that yeah. for you guys because, you know, you want to respect people's privacy. But um, I do think based on what happens, we'll probably do a podcast on it. I think that'd be kind of cool. For sure. Um, but there is... A child at that location that's having paranormal gotcha. experience as well but luckily for her she has a very good support system that helps which is very important um and you want to be careful you don't want to validate something that's not happening but i like, feel like it's wrong not to validate kids when they're actually experiencing you know, just stuff just kind of investigate it but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take just a quick break because <clears throat> you guys got to see us play catch up because we hadn't seen each other in forever so so exciting and then when we come back we'll, we'll get into some personal paranormal and then a little bit mm -hmm. about what you do down in chattanooga that i would love to go and check out so we'll be right back well welcome back um we didn't really take a break i just hit record on the thing that's okay though um but that's you know so she's still here she didn't leave not this um, time. She didn't run away yet, so we're just going to keep shooting. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we're going to talk about some of your paranormal experiences mm -hmm. and kind of what you do. Mm -hmm. um, so, what, I'll, what I'm going to do is kind of just hand you the reins sure. and then... We'll talk we'll about just, it. Yeah, we'll just we'll have chat. casual, casual conversation. Casual ladies doing casual things. <laughs> casual things. Casual things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'll do like a little introduction of like what I do and also like then we'll start into like some of the personal experiences because I gave a little bit of a background from like childhood early on stuff and I yeah. think I'll try to go in order from what I can remember like being the most prominent kind of stuff and then after that because I'll be honest I've always believed in ghosts like I've never ever I've never had a moment in my life where I'm like ghosts aren't real like I I've, I believe in energy I believe the energy imprints I believe there's several types of hauntings like intelligent mm -hmm. non-intelligent like yeah. more just like loops of like things that just got stuck there because of the you know energetic imprint I, I believe in all that kind of stuff and I grew up watching like ghost hunters and like you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. like my dad who 
while he's not been in my life in years, like, he's the one who kind of introduced me to a lot of the paranormal stuff. So, like, I do appreciate that aspect for sure. Um, Now, so... So we'll, let's go ahead and so I'm a ghost tour guide in Chattanooga. So um, it's like I, I, it was a dream. It was a bucket list li- item. Okay, okay, but literally just not meaning to interrupt, but no, that's like good. one of my dream jobs. I wanted to do it so bad. I would love to be a paranormal tour guide. Yes, I think that it's so freaking neat. Yeah, and you can go through and which I'm sure you're about to talk about. In fact, versus fiction mm-hmm. is like my favorite game to play in the paranormal. I always, especially when I'm bringing my like tour groups through i always try to let them know okay so some like some of this is going to be local legend some of this is going to be more like based in fact and like in newspapers and all this kind of stuff and like some of it has more of like documented hauntings and some are more just like word of mouth so like take it with a grain of salt take it for what it is enjoy the stories enjoy the history behind it Mm -hmm. um but in terms of the ghost tour guide stuff, like that, like I said, it's a bucket list item. I've always wanted to do it. When I was a little kid, my grandparents would take us on vacations to like Amelia Island and like different places in Florida. And I would always ask, I want to go on the ghost tour guide tours, ghost tour, ghost tour. And then I would buy like a book, whatever ghost book they had for that town. I would buy it and bring it home with me. So that was like something that was very like special and near and dear to my heart. Right. And um, when I moved to Chattanooga in February, um, I had gotten a serving job that was awesome. It was excellent. I work at a private club, and it is the best serving job I've ever had. Um, they take really good care of me. But I, I really was like, you know what, though? Because it's only four days a week there, yeah. which has been lovely, I've been able to have more time to do the tour guide stuff. So um, I found it just kind of popped up in my feed one day that, you know, that this local company was coming to start a group in Chattanooga, and I, you know, joined them. And I'm thinking about going more local because there's, um, like, this the one I'm with right now is national based and there's some more local like tour groups that I would uh, you know tour guide groups I think I'd be more interested in because they have more options too um like they have more like a cemetery tour and a pub crawl and like all these different fun stuff so I'm, I'm really thinking about like switching over to that just because of the options and everything but um so right now we have like a kid family friendly tour and like an adults tour that I'm doing with this company and they're okay um I I really enjoy a lot of the stories Some of the stories I feel like meh about, some of them I've had to like change out and like find my own to like replace or like somebody else in the tour group, another guide has like given me suggestions of like, hey, you know, there's this one thing that we haven't even, that's not even on the script they gave us that you might want to look into, like Mm -hmm. uh, Brown's Ferry and like uh, John Brown, uh, one of the characters, one of the people that's part of the tours, he's Chattanooga's first serial killer. Hmm. And it wasn't even part of our script. So I was like, well, I'm putting that in. Oh, screw, yeah. screw this. I'm, oh, hell yeah. Let's put that one in. That one's a lot better than, like, that's the witch some, story they were talking about and everything. Jack the Ripper shit. That's what, what I'm mean? saying. Like, why wouldn't you? And we'll yeah. talk about him a little bit. I'll tell y'all some of the stories, um, like, that we tell on the tour. Not all of them, but just, like, a few um, in a second, too. But let's go ahead and go over my personal experiences. Um, so that way we can have a little bit of background on, like, why I'm interested in this kind of stuff, too. Because I've had... I've had some that are like really 100% I knew what they were you know what I'm saying and like there's some that like were more personal and everything but we'll get into all that so I think my first one is I didn't have a lot like through my teenagehood I feel like hormones block a lot of things if I'm gonna be honest like Mm -hmm. I know some people are a little bit more sensitive and susceptible to like the paranormal you know than I may have been during that time frame but I know that like when I was a kid I had a lot more experiences and then through like my hormonal changes and like teenagehood that kind of like subsided yeah also because your mind is on different things too I think you know what I'm saying like you're definitely distracted you're not looking for you know, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you may not be looking for well, it. When as you're much. when you're a teenager, um, no offense to any teens out there, you have tunnel vision. You do. Like you very much tunnel vision on like zero offense though. You can't help it. Like yeah, literally you just can't help you're it. You're going through a lot of changes in life. Yeah. It's just um, not the time to focus on that kind of thing, I don't yeah, think. <laughs> yeah, I know. So it's very tunnel vision based. Because I same thing I didn't have a lot yeah, during my that was like my blackout time. Mm-hmm. Even when I'm PMSing still sometimes. <laughs> I'm just like, you know what? My hormones are raging and I got nothing for y'all right now. I got zero. (laughs) You know what I mean? You know, (laughs) so, um, so let's go ahead and start. Cause like the closest one I had after, you know, teenagehood, which I was still a teenager when this happened, I was 17 years old. Um, I got really lucky and I got to go on a two week trip to Europe, um, through my school. It was a week in France and a week in Spain, which was really fun. And, um, 
there was a lot of drama on that trip and other stuff. If you want to talk about that later, I can totally share. Uh, but um, there was one, so we spent our first week in France and like, you know, you're 17 years old, you're allowed to drink a little bit. So like things got a little muddled, but I will tell you the night that this happened, I was painfully sober because <laughs> I had been drinking for like a week straight and I was not a drinker. Like I was 17, yeah, even yeah. back in the States, I was like, oh, I was a good kid. I didn't really like drink underage or anything. It wasn't really, Honestly, you know, insane. I was pretty like normal, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, but I was like, you know, if I'm allowed to do it, I might as well try it. So, so I, I kind of went overboard for that first week in France. And then we had an in-between city that we were staying at called Carasson, and I may be pronouncing that wrong, I don't know, but Carasson is called, they called it the thousand year old city. It's surrounded by like um, a wall, mm -hmm. and um, we stayed just outside the city. Like, technically, we were like in the city, but like we were not within the border of the wall. Right. Um, but it's a city in between France and Spain, so it was like our transition city before we were going to Spain. Okay. So my friends, you know, were drinking that night. They were doing everything I didn't want to do because I was so painfully, like, dehydrated. Right. <laughs> and I was like, all I want right now is a Coca-Cola and some water. That's it. I don't, want any, I don't want any alcohol or anything. So I was kind of babysitting, like, the one of the girls that was staying in our room tonight, that night because, like, we had to choose roommates mm -hmm. and I was having a bad time with one of my roommates for most of the trip. Um, we did not stay friends after this trip either. <laughs> but so, so one of the friends was, like, she drank a little bit too much and she was acting a little bit nuts and we finally get her back to the hotel room because we also don't want like the teachers to know that she drank way too much yeah our parents had to sign a thing that was like you can have like this many drinks at night and like her parent i think said that she could have like two and so she had her two and then all the people that were like me and heavily dehydrated and didn't want to drink that night because we had wine that was complimentary with her meal mm -hmm. and so she was just taking the wine from other people and oh, drinking wow. it which was super fun and previously in the trip she tried to jump out a window it was like a whole mess oh wow we love it we love to see it um there was a lot more than paranormal going on during that trip but <laughs> <laughs> so we get back to the hotel room after i'm like okay we have to like usher her in i'm like po'd as hell because yeah. i'm like my parents did not pay five thousand dollars for me to come and babysit this woman um <laughs> so we get her in like in so this is one of those hotel rooms that's like um the it's like pre-set up for people to stay long term yeah. so there's like a full kitchenette and it's europe so they have like knives <laughs> in the kitchenette which i feel like in the u.s we would not be allowing which is honestly probably safe probably smart yeah um so she like went and got one of the knives out of what this is a true story she got one of the knives out of one of the th like little drawers and everything and she like took it to her pants and she was trying to like cut her pants off to make shorts and that's what she was telling us while she was slurring her words and so i had to have the other girl that was saying with this hold her hand that had the knife in it while i like pried it out of her fingers and i was like okay everyone needs to go the hell to bed right now right now i don't want to deal with any of y'all sister just wanted some shorts she mm -hmm. wanted some attention <laughs> she wanted some attention right uh she had not gotten enough evidently that trip so I took the knife, I hid it out on the windowsill, went and took a bath. There was two twin beds in the bedroom, and that was it. And then there was a pull-out couch. So I was like, y'all take the twin beds. Mm -hmm. I'm happy sleeping out here. <laughs> yeah. Far away where there's a door in between us, you know? Um, so they go to bed. You know, the other girl was fine. Like, she was just trying to help me out and, like, get to bed. And so she helped the other girl to bed. And then I pulled the couch out, you know, got ready. I turned the TV on. It was all in, like, French. So I don't, I don't know. You know, I was like, I just want background noise. So I turned that on. It's like a box TV. And then um, right before I go to bed, I'm a little anal. So, like, I check everything. I, like, pushed all the chairs and the table and everything, you know. Yeah. Set it up. Because we were only staying there one night. So that way in the morning, we could just, like, grab our bags and go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm going to bed. I'm exhausted. I fall right to sleep too because it's like pitch black in that room it was perfect <laughs> and um i wake up actually because i heard the tv turning off yeah and you know those big like box tvs that make that choo noise yeah. so like that i was a very familiar noise to me but it also like woke me up because i'm a fairly light sleeper so i woke up and it was like pitch black and um I was like, well, like, I'm chalking up the TV turning off to, like, maybe it was on a timer. You're right. Because, right. like, the older TVs have timers and yeah. stuff, and especially for a hotel room. You never know. So, turn the, t the TV turned itself off, or, like, it was on a timer or whatever. I still don't know the answer to that one, but I'm going to chalk it up to that. And, um... So I'm like laying there. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I guess I have to go find the remote to turn it back on and make me feel better, blah, blah, blah. So I, I'm about to get up to find the remote to turn it back on. And I hear one of the chairs screeching across the freaking like kitchen floor, tile floor. Yeah. And I was like, well, 
that's a little uncomfortable. So like, I'm like a little out of it. I like stand up. I I said, say my roommates names. I'm like, hey, you know, either y'all out here, blah, blah, you know, nobody answers quiet, quiet, quiet. So I stand up and I go to the table and I see that there's a single chair pulled out from the table, which I know for a fact, I pushed all of them back in. And yeah. I knew for a fact, I'd heard it screech across the floor and like open up. So I was like, well, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I guess I'll just push it back in and go back to bed because I don't got time for none of this. I'm so tired. Yeah. I was exhausted. Yeah. Like, I was like, I'll revisit this in the morning. So, um, but just to check, because I was like, maybe, maybe one of them did get up to go to the bathroom or like, you know, go in the kitchen to get something. I don't know. Right. You know, so I go back into the bedroom where they're staying and I like open the door just a little bit, like I creak it and I look inside and both of them like on their stomachs, like snoring out, out. Yeah. like they had you can tell they hadn't moved in forever it's like an old drunk sleep he was it for one of them it absolutely was and uh so i look and i peek in and i'm like okay so they definitely didn't get up and i'm like i'll deal with this snoring so i go back to sleep wake up the next morning and um the other roommate that didn't lose her mind uh came up to me and was like did you come into our bedroom last night and i was like i mean i cracked the door open like i, I didn't even tell her what had happened yet mm. i was like i cracked the door open because i thought i heard something but like that's it. And she goes, so you didn't come into the bedroom? And I said, no, no, I didn't come in the bedroom. And she was like, you're sure? Because, like, somebody opened the closet door last night. And I thought it was the other girl. But then I looked over and she was, like, dead asleep. And I was like, oh, okay. So the door was open when you woke up? And she was like, yeah. She was like, I definitely closed it last night, too. I was like, okay. And other kids actually had independent experiences. I could hear them talking at, like, breakfast that everyone had had. Not everyone, but a lot of the different rooms had had, like, strange things going on. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's, like I said, thousand-year-old city. Who knows, you yeah. know, what's going on in that yeah. area for thousands of years. Well, I mean, there's, there's, and that's why Europe is so heavily active with paranormal activity. Mm -hmm. is it's so old. Oh, yeah. Well, so, so many so, people yeah, are so over I, there. It, it would honestly, I would be disappointed to hear that you stayed over there. And, and had no experiences? Uh, yeah. It was weird. So that was, like, the first one that I, I will say as, like, an adult or, like, an older person that, like, I know for a fact happened. <laughs> You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so that that's the first story I always tell, always tell because of that. Um, do you want to take a break real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Take, I'm going to take a break and go yell at the cats because I have a feeling they're getting into things. <laughs> it's too quiet. It is too quiet. <laughs> um, but we'll be around back again. All right, well, we're back. Um, cat was just on top of the fridge. Not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> That's fair. So, yeah, so we left off with... Um, Europe and Karasun and the thousand-year-old city. But now that story's over. And the next one, actually, uh, Brian, was he wasn't there, but he was there. He wasn't there, but he was there. Uh, for uh, our Brian, right? Yeah. Brian, we love you. Yeah. He doesn't love me as much, but he tolerates me. So. <laughs> <laughs> he probably he tolerates. Yeah, he tolerates me. No, he probably loves you a lot more than he loves me. That's okay though, because I purposefully get on his nerves. Oh. It's like a brother sister relationship where yeah. he is an unwilling participant in the whole situation. Oh, he doesn't want to be part of it. Yeah, those are my favorite. Yeah, I used to make fun of him because he's old. <laughs> he's not old, but like <laughs> he's, not, he's really not. But I he would, hates it when you say. He is. <laughs> and I would love to have Brian on here one day too. That would be fun just to chat, just because he's such a character. You guys he would is. love him. But so Brian was in the. Brian was in the building. In the building. <laughs> he was okay, absolutely hi. in the building. Cool. So okay, so the, we went to Vegas um, back in twenty. 18 not long after we'd met mm -hmm. in fact it may have been after i don't know i don't know august when did we meet it was in the summer because it was hot as balls so when after we, did that we film. Met yeah okay so it was right after we met then and uh we went to the action on film festival that was in vegas um the guy who runs it he is no longer around so i don't know how long that festival is gonna you know work on um but del w w watson I need to remember his name because I only met him once, but he was a lovely individual and he put it on every single year. It was a cool experience. Um, but so anyway, so we went to Vegas. I'd never been to Vegas before. I'd never even been out that way. It just feels like a giant <laughs> blow dryer, <laughs> hot blow dryer. <laughs> but it wasn't too bad. You know? Right. <laughs> um, so, so it's like me, Brian, um, Rain was there. Did you ever meet Rain? Mm -mm. Rain's lovely. You'd like her. And then Thomas. We talked about Thomas. And Thomas was the one that experienced this with me. <laughs> And, like, he's had his own experiences and everything that we talked about in the past. And, like, he's my buddy. I miss him. But, um, so, we were 
you know, going to the festival and everything, the first day, like, day or two was, like, a little bit rough. And um, we went to the, like, liquor store to get some alcohol. And there were many other things that are illegal <laughs> out there that, you know, we participated in at the time, right, to be right, fair. Right. And uh, so we brought it all home. We were like, you know what? It's been, like, a rough day. And it's hot as hell out here. Let's just, like, get blasted before we have to go back to the film festival tomorrow. So, you know, we went outside and... Had a couple drinks, did a couple things um, out there, just talking to each other. Then Brian and Rain were tired, so they went on to bed. You know, responsible people. We were not being responsible. We just <laughs> I can just see Brian being like the dad of the trip. Was he? Yes. Was he like a father figure? More like Thomas was. Thomas yeah. was like the dad who had to corral all the kids mm. at the time. You know, so I don't yeah. want to talk about the inter connectedness of the situation because there's a lot of stuff that's none of my business <laughs> from the trip um but anyway so he and rain were like we're tired and responsible we're gonna go to bed and we were like okay we're gonna be out here drinking <laughs> y'all have fun so and okay so when we first got to this airbnb it was an airbnb we were staying in right when we first got to this airbnb it was it's a four bedroom and there were four of us we were all gonna like take separate places so so there were, it's weird because I think that this room had to have been built on at some point or like turned into a bedroom because there was a bedroom on this side. There mm -hmm. were three bedrooms on this side and both the bathrooms and everything else was on this side of the house. So right. it's like this felt like it was like built on or something. I wasn't sure what was going on there. Um, but we got, we went in, everyone got in before me. So I thought, you know, dang, they took all the rooms on this side. I'm going to have to go stay in whatever rooms on that side. And I look in that room, there's like two twin beds. It reminded me of the one in Europe a little bit too. Two twin beds and then a mirror closet door. Same thing as in Europe and the same setup and everything. Um, but I look, I like creaked the door and I was like, mmm, spotty senses say Megan doesn't want to stay in this room. <laughs> and then Brian crept up behind me. He's like, what are you looking at? And I was like, oh, you can have this room. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then I ran to the other side. I was like, you're not taking... You Brian. can have the creepy room. You enjoy Brian, the ghost. she set you up. If I did. you're watching this, she knows, set you up. He knows. He's so aware that I totally would have fed him to demons that night. I didn't care. I was like, I'm not doing it. It's not going to be me. So, so I ran back to the other side of the room and, um, you know, claimed one of the other bedrooms. And then he was like dang it, you know, like, I don't want to stay in the weird twin bedroom room, like, what the hell's up with that? And then Rain was like, well, you can just stay with me in my room or on the couch or something, and he was like, okay, I guess I'll do that. <laughs> so we all, nobody wound up sleeping in that room. It yeah. just was like an open It was room. like a consensus of this room's kind of Creepy, weird. and nobody yeah. wants to be in here. Yeah. This person also had a lot of, like, McDonald's Happy Meal toys that he proudly displayed <laughs> on the wall, which was, okay. like, kind of, like, cute i guess so i don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh, but there is a character named beerus or barris yeah, okay yeah, okay <laughs> you're like no i know um mm -hmm. he had one of those figurines that was like standing up on the shelf and when we first walked in it was the only toy that had been knocked over and i was like oh let me go you know put him back because yeah. i was like you know he's the only fix it for him figures cost money whatever yeah, yeah and like so we go and do our things we come back beerus is knocked over again mm -hmm. and i was like okay sure like but he and you know, it's the only one that knocked, that was knocked over, and, and there were others that could have been. You know what I'm saying? If it was like an earthquake or like just like uh, like cars driving by and like racking the house, like there were many others that could have been knocked over, but for some reason he was the only one that got knocked over. I didn't mm -hmm. know what was going on. Yeah. So we came back. He, same thing. I put him back up. I was like, whatever. We had you know the drinks and everything. Uh, the other two went off to bed, and then. Um, Thomas and I, like, we sat, so he sat across from me at, like, there was this big dining room table, so he, we both were sitting at the heads of the table, so, like, right. he was down there, I was down here, and we were, like, a little bit blasted and, like, joking with each other across the way, and, um, so, so, dining room table, back rooms behind where he would have been sitting with, like, so all the, and, and the toys were on the same wall as that room. Okay. So, like, hanging out there, you know, his back was to that room, I was, like, facing it that way, and then there was, like, a sliding glass outside door on this side across the hall from that bedroom. Yeah. And, um... So, we were sitting, talking, chatting, whatever, and then we hear a sliding door open. So then Thomas, who's, like, this big, bulky dude who's, like, you know, no nonsense, he got up and he was, like, somebody coming in the, coming in the you know house somebody coming in the house like yeah, he got he went like full yeah, yeah like like defense mode like trying to make sure everyone's good because he's got three essentially children <laughs> we weren't children but we were basically children <laughs> i think brian's even older than him but you know we were children and he's like you know i gotta go protect my youngins <laughs> so he, you know he gets up to look to see if like the outside door had been open it yeah. hadn't been mm -hmm. and so i was like 
what's going on? He's like, I don't know. The door's not open. So he's like, he like goes in the other room that nobody's staying in, opens the door. And he says, did you, he said, did you go in this room and, um, close the closet door? And I said, no, I said it was open or excuse me. I said it was closed when I got, I, I saw it closed when we first got here, but I didn't close it. And yeah. he goes, well, I'm a little paranoid and I like to go through the closets and open them. And I didn't close it back at all at any point. And he's like, nobody else has been in this room either. And the door in the closet door is closed. Hmm. <laughs> so both of us just look at each other like, what the hell? Because I'm going to be out. Yeah, ew. <laughs> like, that ew, was like those. icky. I don't <laughs> like it. Well, and I don't know if it, you know what it was or anything, yeah. but like, I guess one of the other people could have gone in there, but none of us really stayed in that side. And we all had eyes on each other the whole night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, up until when they went to bed, but the bedrooms were on that side that we were staying in. So yeah. nobody, nobody went to that side. That side. So, I don't know. He was like, like, like me in the chair, paranoid mm -hmm. about that kind of stuff, and so that's why he checked it and moved it when we first got there. Same with me in the chairs in Europe. Is like right. I got paranoid. I right. want to push him in. Yeah. But so it's just, it was just interesting. That's all. Those sliding glass doors. <laughs> Megan, they're listen, creepy. I'm just gonna tell you. I think there's a trend here mm -hmm. um, For sure. of places where you stay and mm -hmm. then things happening you, the twin beds in the room that's your first indicator it is it is I, I think twins are an indicator for me actually i've had some weird i don't know but twins have been anything that's like a twin yeah with me i don't have a twin i don't know what's going on but like i last year that was a big theme for me so yeah i was having dreams about that kind of stuff i don't yeah. know what's going on yeah I'm that's not a joke <laughs> i think i think the, the running takeaway from that is if there's twin beds in a separate space with a sliding glass mirror door where you're staying mm -hmm. maybe you should be like I mean, if you want to experience that, but if Hang not, out in that room. Yeah. Well, at the time, I wasn't like, I was, a, it's not that I wasn't interested, but I was like, mm, I don't know enough about it to like mess with it. Yeah. So at that time, I was not like ready to just full so speed ahead. Go in there and throw all kinds of equipment on the bed and be like, yeah. bring it. Yeah. Now, my next encounter is what prepared me for that, though, okay. <laughs> because, uh, um, this is the one that's like big and this is the one that makes me nervous talking about just a little bit because I'm like I don't know if people are gonna believe me and you don't have to believe me. I'm gonna say this now. The others I like kind of like prefaced with hey um, These are gonna feel more realistic because these are all things that legitimately happen to me Yeah, you can say if they're real or not. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? But like this is one that's gonna feel a little outlandish <laughs> But I promise I'm gonna tell it as accurately and truthfully as my experience entailed. Yeah, you know what I'm saying Yeah, no, I have an experience just like that. It's I hard. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's hard. It's hard because I can't make other people see and experience what I did either so so um Back in March of last year, um, I was living in North Carolina with my husband. He was deployed at the time, and I had one very close friend um, that was like, you know, always in and out of my house. Always, I kind of, I would sometimes refer to her as my roommate <laughs> because she lived in an apartment that was like, it was like our apartment and then a separate apartment, and then hers was like right next to us. So like, she was kind of like my sister down there, and like, you know, we stayed, you know, together in contact. And she was somebody who. Um, She'd had a lot of like ghost experiences. She can see a lot of stuff and has even like had admitted that to me. And at the time, it kind of made her feel like weird and uncomfortable. It wasn't something she really embraced very much. Um, I was trying to make her feel a little bit more comfortable with it, even though it wasn't something that I've ever experienced. Like, because if it some was something that she was legitimately experiencing, I wanted her to feel validation with that too, you know? So. You know, I always wanted her to know that, like, the option the option doesn't always mean that you're crazy. <laughs> you know, it's not True. always psychosis. Yeah. It can be. But, like, you know. So, um, anyway, she was over one night, and I'd actually had, like, a really strange dream the night before. Okay, I'm going to tell the story in its full capacity, and I'm going to put, like, a trigger warning myself on it because I'm going to talk about the dream that like is prior and I know it sounds disconnected but I'm going to tell you right now while I'm not going to be able to share the whole story because it's really long um it's all connected and it's all coming back around which is I'm noticing interesting okay um so the dream that I had prior was like I was at this like engagement party for somebody and um like this was the night before that this incident happened I was at you know an engagement party with somebody in the dream and a very close friend of mine was with me and she was like she kept trying to get me to go to the bath go in the bathroom with her and I was like I don't want to go in the bathroom like in the dream even I was like something bad's in the bathroom <laughs> I don't know what's in the bathroom I don't want to go in there and she's like no no you know come with me so I follow her into the bathroom there's this bathtub there in my dream that was like porcelain and had like 
it was like somebody took like some like two by fours or whatever and just like knocked them into the side of it to like keep it closed like yeah. it's like as if there was like some like broken piece of it that like was being covered and she's like you have to see what's under the tub and I'm like I really don't want to see what's under the tub she's like no no so she like punches a hole through it which is very on brand for her if you knew her in person <laughs> she like punches a hole through the two by four in the dream and like yanks it out and then like I peek inside and it's like dirt and overgrowth but this is where the trigger comes in like this is like death and like children trigger so like just be aware of that um there were two like fetuses mm -hmm. <laughs> under the bathtub in like the overgrowth and the dirt and everything that were just like hanging out twins Mm -hmm. We see that theme oh, coming back up yes. for me. So this, I have this dream and it disturbed me a lot. So like I saw like this image, it was very visceral. I was like, ha, ah, <laughs> I have to go. So in the dream, I was like, we gotta go. We gotta get out of the bathroom. We gotta, we gotta leave this and we leave. I wake up, I'm like weird. I'm like, that's a weird dream. I've never had a dream that weird before. I had very vivid dreams, but nothing like that. That felt symbolic like that somehow, but I didn't understand mm -hmm. it. And earlier that day, I promise it all ties in, earlier, kind of, uh, that day I see, like, I'm going around town, um, Alana, my friend's supposed to come over later, and and um, kind of just waiting for her and doing, like, stuff. And I see, it's, like, March, and I see this white pumpkin outside of someone's door. And I was like, that's weird, white pumpkin in March, blah, blah, blah. And it was, like, a, a real pumpkin, like, it wasn't, like, a decoration or anything. Yeah. Necessary. I mean, you know. So I'm like, okay, weird, <laughs> whatever, going about my business. I come home, um, my friend comes over, we're talking with each other, and uh, I tell her, you know, I don't tell her about the pumpkin or anything, because it didn't make sense to me <laughs> yeah. um, at the time, but I told her about the dream and everything, and she's like, well, that's wild, I wonder if it has to do with the person, because I dreamt about somebody in particular is like, engagement party and she's like well maybe it has to do with like their like skeletons in the closet i was like well that's a good metaphor like that would make more sense i don't think it had anything to do with that now but like at the time i thought maybe and um anyway so she was helping me clean up for uh, my friend that was actually in the dream um that like led me to the bathroom was coming to stay with me for the weekend and uh, she was helping me clean up and fold some laundry and stuff and um we were so our apartment has two two levels there's a lower level upper uh, level the stairs from the upper level go straight down into the front door okay um and then like so it's like front door stairs and linen closet at the top of the stairs right and then the two bedrooms bathroom um so she's in the bedroom over here folding laundry we're chit-chatting i take some of the laundry to move into the hallway to put away in the linen closet and i'm paranoid as you can see from other stories and like the chairs and everything <laughs> So, like, I always check down the stairs to make sure the door is locked because, you know, living alone and my husband's deployed and you never know. Yeah. And uh, so I check down the stairs and to see if the door is locked. And as soon as I look down the stairs, there's this grown fucking man, broad, wearing a leather jacket with a collar. He was looking down so I didn't see his face. He had black hair that looked like it was, like, wet, like coming from the rain mm -hmm. that was, like, dripping down into his face. And he was just kind of, like, walking up the stairs kind of like that. And I'm, like, frozen because I'd never seen anything ever like that mm -hmm. before. At first, I genuinely thought it was somebody from my past that reminded me of this thing that had, like, come to hurt me. I was, like, genuinely afraid. Like, I thought it was a real person. Yeah. And then I'm, like, stuck still. And my friend comes up behind me. She's, like, "What are? why are you standing there? Are you okay? And then she comes up behind me. And she freezes. And I notice she freezes. And I said, do you see anything down the stairs? <laughs> And she said, I do. And I said, can you please describe to me what you're seeing down the stairs? And she said, so there's a man sitting at the bottom of the stairs. Mm -hmm. She said, I don't know how tall he is, but he's very broad. Mm -hmm. He's got a black jacket with a collar on. And he has black hair that's like in his face. And he looks really sad. And I was like, who the hell is this? Who's in my house right now? Because at this point, I couldn't see anything anymore. Like, mm -hmm. she had seen him in progression. I don't know. I, I swear, like, when I walked up, it was almost like he scared me and I scared him. Mm -hmm. And then he went all the way back down to the bottom of the stairs and was trying to get, like, a pity response from us somehow, mm -hmm. which I didn't really understand. So, like, we, like... We went around and smoke cleansed the whole house because uh, I didn't know what was going on or what it was. I had no because I'd lived there for like almost two years and I hadn't had any activity. It was a very like neutral space, so I was like, "What is this?" Um, but so anyway, so we get so freaked out, we get into the car and we're driving, and then Alana sees another pumpkin, not the same one I see, another white pumpkin, and I'm like, "That's weird." And then. 
she says, because I didn't tell her about the one earlier, she goes, a white pumpkin, a white pumpkin in the middle of March? What does a white pumpkin mean? What is a white, like, she won't let it go. It was very, it was an out of character response for her as well. Like, she was like, it's like, until I looked it up, she wasn't going to stop asking yeah. about it. Oh, yeah. And so I pull my phone out and I look up what white pumpkins mean. And <laughs> the only thing I could find online was that white pumpkins are set outside of somebody's door to signify the loss of a child gone too soon. Oh. So I was I've like, never heard that. I had never heard that. I had no idea. So like, I still don't know what that was indicating. And things are still like coming up this year that I'm like curious about. And I think we're kind of coming full circle with some things. I don't want to like talk about any of that yet. Talk to, talk, yeah. You know, because like, I still manifest. No, no. Right, yeah. And I also don't know what's what it's specifically signifying but twins came up a lot last year so i don't know what's going on but like that was such a weird that was what really like drove me into wanting to do the paranormal investigation group stuff like and like really get into it because after i had that experience i was like well if i can handle seeing this kind of thing yeah which i wound up finding out later on that that was more of a personal thing it wasn't really a ghost it was more of like a personal manifestation which i'm happy to get into later on in the cast and everything but yeah so that's what really like shot me into feeling comfortable doing that kind of stuff that's so cool yeah that's neat <laughs> it's weird <laughs> so what we're gonna do now um just so episode doesn't run too long. No, you're good. Is we're going to wrap this one up yeah. and then we're going to go into the, we'll do a tour guide cast. Yeah, I would love to. That way you can kind of talk about everything. Thank you for sharing your experiences. Though. Of course. Like it really does. I know they're weird and I know they don't sound real, <laughs> but. but. But no, and, but there's, there, and I was talking to the guy that I'm going to his house next week to do an investigation. Because I was on the phone for, with him for like two hours and he was like, I'm so sorry, I'm rambling. I know some of this sounds crazy. I was like, no. I was like, there is a validation mm -hmm. in when you're talking to someone who's had experiences and they're like, you know, you're not crazy. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, some things may sound outlandish. Yeah. But like, and it's like I've said on the podcast before, you guys know. I very much believe, while I may not agree that some things are paranormal, I very much mm -hmm. believe that people have experiences and they mm -hmm. believe what they've experienced. Mm -hmm. And I will die on that hill. No, I agree. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching watching this one. I'm going to link Megan's socials and everything down below so you guys can give her a follow, especially on TikTok. She does some really neat stuff. I'm not super active right now, but we're trying. We're trying to get yeah, back into we're it. Trying. We're going to get her back into it, but... Uh, we're going to end here, and then we will see you guys in her next episode. See you next time. Bye. Bye.